So I think we can start now. So good morning, everyone. I'm Quentin, and today uh, my talk will be an introduction to U-Boot and Linux porting on new ARM platforms. Um, so this is basically a step-by-step -step guide. You will not have a lot of uh, code involved, nothing to deal with drivers writing or uh, anything really um, uh, code involved. So uh, a bit about myself. So I'm Quentin Schulz, like, like I said. I'm an embedded Linux uh, and kernel engineer at Free Electrons from a year now. I started to uh, code on the kernel a year ago. Um, so my, um, I would say the reason why I'm doing this talk is that I have working on, uh, I've been working on adding uh, U-Boot and Linux support for an AMX6 uh, custom, uh, custom board. So this will be um, my feedback to this journey to uh, have U-Boot and Linux work on this specific board. Um, so this is an AMX6 uh, based board. This is really a well-supported so SOC, and there are a lot of uh, already well-supported IPs. That's why I'm choosing uh, to uh, use this board as an example, so you don't have a lot of uh, coding skills involved. Um, so, as I said in the title, there is U-Boot and Linux parts, but of course, if it was that easy to explain how to pour the Linux to a board, uh, there wouldn't be any ELCE, so uh, it's real, really uh, focused on U-Boot and then a small part on uh, Linux as well. So a few golden rules when you want to add support to a board. You first really, really wish to have the sources of your BSP, and you have, and if you uh, have them, you want to compile and run the BSP code on your platform. So that one, you can validate the IP is actually working with some code, even if it's ugly and maintainable or whatever. To have a reference code so that you uh, can use those registers, the, the workflow, uh, the probing process, everything from the BSP, and have a code that you can use to debug. And this is really, really, really important. And th that will really help you to uh, add support to your board. Um, then, you want to focus only on uh, RAM initialization and UART. So only that. And once you have UART, you can start to debug and add new uh, IPs and new features, etc. So stop there. Only RAM, UART, commit, <sighs> it's okay. Then you can have one IP at a time and then commit, because sometimes you will break things when you add support for a new IP and break another IP, then you can bisect uh, with Git. So this is the golden, these are the golden, golden rules. So a uh, little presentation on the custom board I used and I ported U-Boot and Linux on. So it's an AMX6, uh, so awkward, we have two boards. Module with an extra extension board. And on this um, product, you have Ethernet support, I2C, uh, SPI, NAND, EMMC, SD card reader, uh, USB device, EEPROM on I2C, GPIO, UART, audio on I2S, HDMI, LVDS, PCIe, USB host, RTC, and PMIC. So everything is supported um, in Linux, and some are supported in U-Boot. The client didn't want all the, the features, so I'll present how I added support and how easy it was. Um, so first part, the U-Boot porting, which is the biggest, biggest part of this talk. So uh, you first has to have to know that U-Boot is kind of a middle of a tra uh, transition uh, in two aspects. The first one is the U-Boot uh, has had to use to uh, uh, have board header files only. So you had to uh, define in this uh, board header file uh, constants and defines and to say, um, I want to probe this device, I want to uh, config configure it this way or that way, and the register base address, etc. And some features, so which command, for example, I want in U-Boot, so NAND or UBI command or feed image uh, commands, etc. And now it's slowly migrating to K-config options only. 
and so you can access them via uh, menu config, which is really, really uh, helpful. The second migration is from Mazio driver probing uh, to driver model. So now uh, the drivers are registering in the class, and you can basic it's, it's basically better, I would say, but it's still undergoing, uh, ongoing. So uh, there is a little bit of code that is using still the board header file a lot and not kconfig, and the same for driver model. So uh, when you take inspiration from other boards, be careful, because they might be, uh, I would say, obsolete in their uh, kind of way to uh, use U-boot. So a little bit of uh, the presentation of the U-boot architecture. So first, you have the Arc directory with everything Arc or platform related. So the DTS, uh, the device resource file, uh, the CPU in each sequence, the, pi the pin mix controller, the drum controller, the clocks, whatever. And then you have the board repo um, directory. The, so it's code board specific. So it's the in each sequence of your board. So for example, if you have to, uh, let's say, uh, in our case, we had to uh, set um, a set of GPIO high and then low uh, in this in its sequence in a given timing so that uh, the board could boot. This is where you put this in its sequence. Uh, you have also pin mixing configuration uh, as well. Some kconfig file to say where you find the board header file, when you find the board file, and make file a lot of things. And we'll explain each of them. Then you have the configs. Uh, directory where you have all the config, so the dev config. Um, then you have the drivers, the drivers, uh, the include, you have all headers, and especially in include configs, you have all boards header files. So that's where you um, define the constants and um, defines you need for your board. So. Etc. Of course, there is uh, a lot more, but it's not really helpful in this uh, top um, talk. So next, uh, you have to have a workflow, so you don't get lost, and it's easy to uh, do exactly the same each time you want you want to add support for new board. So first, you want to create the board file. So the board file is the file where you s uh, say my board uh, needs this pin mix configuration, it needs uh, this in its sequence, etc. Uh, then you create the board kconfig file to say where you want to find um, the make file, the board header file, the board file, etc. Then you have the make file, the dev config file for the board, the header file, and <coughs> the last two. Um, you have to source your board's kconfig in the architecture's kconfig so that it can be found and define the target kconfig option in its CPU. I'll explain all that, but you have to be uh, careful. This talk is about an experience I had on AMX6, and some platforms, like all winner, share common files, so you don't have to, for example, uh, the three first points and the fifth, you don't have to do them. Uh, so basically, you have only to create a dev config for all winner boards. So first, you have to create the board file. Uh, so you create um, a my vendor directory and a my board directory in which you put uh, your board file. In this file, you have all the includes you need and uh, this weird declare uh, global data pointer which can be used um, before the RAM is initialized. So it's a, I will explain, it's a register you can use. And uh, you init your uh, RAM. Basically, you just say that the RAM size is equal to something uh, IMX, uh, which is IMX, uh, IMX6 dependent, dependent. And then you have the mandatory board init uh, function, which is basically where you want to put all the pin mix configuration code and everything you will need to, uh, well, boot. Um, so about this declare global data pointer, uh, it's usable with GD global variable, uh, like you see in the, in the previous slide. On ARM, it equals to R9, uh, R9 on ARM32, uh, 
and X18 on ARM64. So it's a general purpose uh, register you can use. Basically, they use it in U-Boot to uh, set a lot of uh, flags before the RAM is initialized, so they, s they know how to, uh, for example, the size of the RAM, and you can also, for example, disable the console from there, and yeah, a lot of things. So, like I said, it's store uh, info, which is uh, available very, very, very early in the boot before the RAM is initialized. Um, and um, yeah, basically, you have all the info in include uh, ASM generic global data .h, uh, to find what kind of info is source. There are a lot of uh, variables. Next, we want to create a um, k-config file. So the k-config file, which is really important, is in the same um, directory, so my vendor, my board, under the board directory. And you have first the if target my board. So all the k-config are sources in your architecture k-config. This means that all are passed, and you of course want only your your sysboard, your sysvendor, and you, your sysconfig name for this specific board. So you have to have an if statement on your uh, con k config option for your board, and then you uh, set your config sysboard to a default sysvendor the same and sysconfig name the same. What, wh which are which? So, what are they doing? This vendor and this board are used to identify where the board uh, file is. So Uboot has no uh, idea where it is. It needs these k-config options. So first, if both are present, the um, board file will be uh, under board, this vendor, this board file. Then if uh, this vendor is omitted, it's in board, this board. And if this board is omitted, it's in this board. Uh, board slash sys underscore vendor underscore uh, slash common. And the sysconfig name is used to identify the board header file. So for example, here you have include config sys underscore config underscore name. So from the previous slide, you know that now your, uh, sorry, cake. Yeah, no, it's not where to find the board, uh, board file. It's where to find the, the files that make will uh, use to compile. So, uh, from there, from the, uh, from there, you will have basically uh, board my vendor my board uh, the make file, and with this config name, you will have include configs my board uh, dot h. Then create the board make file, so it's under board uh, slash my vendor slash my board make file, and then you just say I need to compile my board which is the name of my uh, uh, board file. Fourth step, you need to create the board dev, dev config. So here we have uh, the architecture, which is ARM, then the platform, kind of platform you have, uh, IMX6. And you want to have this target my board. You remember the one uh, on top of the K config file? So here, the same. Uh, with config in front. And of course, we want UART uh, driver, either, either wise, uh, otherwise we wouldn't have any UART. And that's it. That's basically the first thing you need to boot an imx 6 based board. F uh, yeah, so basically here, so in this uh, dev config file, you put everything you can find and which is selectable in menu config. Uh, so it's basically drivers, features, so commands, uh, you would behaviors, libs like RSA or anything else that is uh, that you can select in menu config. This is the minimal example for uh, a board header file. So it's the fifth step, create your board header file. So a lot of different uh, options. And you see here the most important one, uh, include mxx uh, under uh, underscore common dot h, which uh, basically, is um, the, the SOC board header file, uh, SOC header file you want to include in uh, all IMX6 based board. So, of course, we'll have different ones for uh, different SOCs or uh, architectures or whatever. 
Uh, at first, we want to be sure we don't uh, compile it twice. Um, then you want to define, so it, this is all IMX specific. And you just say where you want, uh, where is the, um, the base address for your uh, UART driver. And then a lot of others uh, define constants and how to compute things. And that's it. That's all you need for IMX6 uh, from the start to get uh, UART working. Then you have uh, the source board's kconfig file. So uh, you have to source your uh, uh, board's kconfig file in your architecture. So I'm not really sure. I've uh, looked a bit in Uboot. There are two different uh, ways to uh, source your uh, board kconfig file, either in your in directly the ARM architecture or whatever uh, architecture you're working on, kconfig. So like uh, I, sh I show here. So you source your board dot my vendor dot, uh, slash my vendor slash my board kconfig file directly in our ARM kconfig or in your platform uh, kconfig file. So currently there is for IMX6, it's the last one, but for others uh, platforms, it depends. So take a look at Uboot source code to find out which one you should use. And uh, I think, yeah, it's the last step is to add your target my board you used in your uh, kconfig file, so config k uh, kconfig option, and you just say, yeah, it's my awesome board, and it's on IMX6 solo. Uh, so IMX6 solo here, you select all the options you cannot select in um, kconfig, so they are visible in menu config, but you cannot select them. And this is the case for uh, MX6S. And that's it. So what do you what do you need to know know now to uh, uh, add IPs to set up your board, etc. Is that there is a really specific Uboot uh, unit sequence. Um, so first, you need to know that you need to know there are two lists of um, functions that will be called. The first one that will be called before the relocation of the code into RAM, and one afterwards. So uh, the first one is called uh, init sequence uh, F, and it's in common board F. So there is anything that is needed to initialize the RAM. And basically, it's really, really uh, everything that is low, low, low level. And then you have the board uh, init sequence R, which is done after the F, of course. And then you can use the, the RAM. Uh, inside it and other things like the clocks uh, are initialized, etc. Uh, you have to know that some functions are run only when a constant is defined. So, for example, uh, in init sequence f, we have a function called board early, uh, early init f, which is uh, run, I would say compiled, only when config board early init f is defined in your board header file. Uh, any function in, this, in one of those two lists that returns anything else that a zero will fail uh, uBoot. So it stop, and then you can stop in middle of UART. Uh, so you know the the, um, the start of uBoot. You have everything uh, printed. So NAND, I have uh, so many uh, gigabytes. It can stop in the middle, just for for uh, so you know. And so to debug that, because it's really, really annoying, you can uh, define debug, so it will uh, add a lot more of uh, code. But you will have in this uh, uh, loop of init sequence the one that is failing. And you have also to know that not all features are, I would say, features are uh, able uh, available in all functions. So for example, we had a problem with um, you delay not being usable in board early init f, and it took us like two days to find out. Um, then you want to, of course, enable the drivers of your IPs. Um, so you may want to take inspiration from uh, boards with the same IP. So for example, I took in inspiration from the uh, SAB SD, which is basically the same SOC. Uh, so this is a good start. 
if you have having trouble to find uh, the correct drivers and the co co uh, correct config options. You want to inspect the drivers to be sure it's really the one you want. So you go into the appropriate subsystem, for example, for NAND, you want to go in drivers slash MTD slash NAND. Um, and you just go there, open the first one that looks uh, uh, a bit like the one you want or is named after your IP. You focus on the behavior first to see if it can match, then reg the registers, the bit offsets, etc. And you check for undefined macros. And uh, so the first and two uh, items are to select which drivers uh, you want to um, use. And the third is to find out which macros and constants you need to define uh, to make this driver work or even compile. Uh, the fourth one is uh, that you want to be careful. There are a lot of if def uh, blocks in your boot. So these are also uh, uh, def define you, uh, constants you want to define in your board header file. Then. You want to look for the object file of this driver in the make file of the subsystem. So for example, for the NAND, we'll go to drivers slash MTD slash NAND slash make file, I think. I will just uh, present it later. Um, and then you have the base name of your, of your driver, so mydriver.o. And you know that you need to enable this. Uh, uh, to enable the driver, you have to set this uh, define either in the kconfig of your board the dev config of your board, sorry, or in the board header file. Uh, the best way to do it is uh, to know where to put it, is to grab this uh, config option. If it's vis a visible symbol in some kconfig file, so if menu config in menu config, you add it to the board dev config. If it's not visible, so it's in menu config, but you cannot select it, then, or if it's defined uh, elsewhere in board head of others, board head of files, you put it in your board head of file. Make sure your board, your driver is compiled. It's already happened a lot of time to me, for me. So you want to look for uh, my driver uh, uh, file. This is a good in indication. Uh, so a small example with the NAND driver, to how to na I enabled it in uh, for for our board, so driver slash mtd slash nand slash nand underscore mxss.c is the driver we want to use for this board. I found it the same way I explained uh, the, the slide before. So there are a lot of uh, three different um, defines we have to set. The first one is uh, config nand and uh, mxs that you need to compile the driver. So this one here, so in the make, fi make file of the subsystem. It's config non MXS, and you need it in your dev, dev config. Then you have config sysmax NAND device and config sys NAND base constant for configuring the, your uh, device. So in your board dev config, you add NAND MXS and say, yes, I want it. Then you go to the next, which is the board header file, and you define what is needed. So Config six, uh, sysmax NAND device is one. We want only one device. And its uh, base address is this. And of course, it's an IP. You will most likely uh, have to set the pin mixing. So you go to your board file in the board init function and use this IMX6. Uh, uh, function, but you can directly write to the registers uh, to set the correct um, pin mixing configuration, and that's it. You now have uh, your driver, your NAND driver, uh, Insta uh, support for your boot. Um, a little note on device trees. So I know there are device trees in your boot now. Uh, it's slowly. Well, it started in uh, 2012. And the code is slowly migrate, uh, migrated driver by driver, subsystem by subsystem to support device trees. <coughs> it's still an ongoing effort. Uh, you, need, um, you need driver model support for uh, device tree to work. And this, uh, so the driver model is enabled with config DM. And 
most of subsystems and driver have, have a lot of uh, big, big, big if def uh, blocks. So you can't really choose uh, which driver you want to use uh, DM with and some you don't want to use DM for. So it's kind of all or nothing. And for us, it was nothing because uh, the NAND framework isn't, support, uh, isn't migrated to the DM model now. And we had to support it. So I will not really go deep into that. I mean, it's all I can say. Uh, but so you know, there are uh, device tree support in uh, there is device tree support in uh, Ubuntu, and it's uh, still an ongoing effort. So please help if you can. Um, so the effort needed to add support uh, to add su Ubuntu support for my board was basically so everything that is working now is Ethernet, EEPROM on I square C, NAND, EMMC, SD card reader, USB device, GPIO, UART, audio, and PMIC. And all I needed to write is 510 lines. And basically, half of it, because these uh, 160 lines here are only for the RAM configuration and are uh, given by the um, BSP or the by, by the vendor. So I had to add one line in the kconfig uh, file of, your, of the architecture to uh, source my board kconfig, so here, which is uh, 15 lines long. Four lines in ARC ARM, uh, CPU ARM v7 MX6 K config to define the um, target underscore my underscore board. And actually, there is only uh, 100 lines of code, of code, only uh, setting the pin maxing in the board init config, the board file, which is the board init uh, function. No modification otherwise of you would source code. So that's really important. It was re easy, really easy for IMX6. But of course, we had some bug. So uh, we got a really, really weird bug. Uh, for this client, we had to uh, use signed feed image. And U-Boot is actually checking the feed image before booting it. And it's uh, based on the RSA lib. And it was just crashing in the middle of checking. So I had to uh, look a bit inside the lib code. And I couldn't find anything really relevant. So out of luck, I just said, why, why not update U-Boot, right? So uh, from the uh, 2017 uh, version from Mar March, I went up to the one from July. It was quite easy. I had to only take the board header file, the board file, basically what, whatever I just said uh, before, and make sure options defined in board header files are not kconfig options now. And that's it. Then I compile it, run it, and it was working. So it took me like half an hour just to upgrade. And so that you know, it's really easy once your uh, board is supported upstream. You just have to update and not uh, bang your head on your table because you don't understand why it doesn't work. First, you update, and then if you can't, then if it doesn't work, then you just look into the code. I think it's pretty decent uh, technique. So there are also others problems uh, encountered. So like I said, we had a problem with uh, U-Delay. So our board in this sequence was basically toggling a few GPOs with a given timing. And all signals, this is really important, all signals, even UART, go through its FPGA. So basically, if the FPGA is not powered, no UART. So failing in this sequence, no FPGA, no UART no hair on the, on the head anymore. Uh, so it took us, like I said, almost two days to find out that you cannot use U-Delay in board early init F. So the workaround for us was uh, to use a follow-up with CPU relax, and then it worked. So uh, I think we have to send a mail to the mailing list to ask why or what is the correct uh, way to deal with uh, delays in early uh, boot sequence. Sorry? OK, thank you. <laughs> so the answer is um, to use timer in it, and then you can use your delay. OK. 
So once it's uh, in it, you can use it directly. So thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, forget this slide. Uh, <laughs> so that was it for U-Boot. Uh, now for the Linux kernel, it will be really, really uh, quick. And I have to be. So uh, your workflow, one, create the device tree uh, of your board and add your um, device tree blob to the make file and then create a dev config for it. That's it. Um, so the device tree, it's a file in a special format, so DTS, device resource, purely describes the hardware of your board, or should be at least, and it matches an IP with the driver thanks to the compatible strings. Uh, you can find the documentation of these um, device tree uh, node in documentation device tree bindings. And of course, I will not present it uh, device tree in itself here because it's a really long subject. So you can find here a really interesting uh, talk given by Thomas Petazzoni, one of my colleagues on device tree uh, four years ago. And next one. So create a board device tree. You want to write, really. You want to write a map of your IP's relationship to know uh, which one is depending on which one. This can be really uh, a good start to understand how your um, uh, platform works, to your board works. So first, you want to find the SOC DTSI, so everything that is uh, all IPs that are inside the SOC, they are already defined. So you just have to find the SOC DTSI. For so far, our board it was. IMX6, uh, I think it was DL.DTSI. Then you look for IP driver in the correct subsystem. So like we did for U-Boot, you go to the, the correct subsystem, and then you can try to grab the code name of your uh, IP. It's usually a good start. Or uh, you can find IPs that's, that are really close uh, to uh, your IP. So for example, I had to, on other, on an other subject, but for uh, PMICs, uh, it was not really exactly the same code name, but it was working with uh, something really close. So it's not mandatory that your compatible uh, will be exactly the name of your IP, of course. Um, once found, you look for the compatible string in your driver, and you f uh, find it in the um, DTM binding d documentation, so you know what kind of properties you need to add to your device tree. And you follow the documentation, you uh, write the correct binding, and uh, some you have to know that some bindings are framework-wide. So you need to go also to the uh, DT binding doc documentation of the framework. So you are sure that all the properties in your device tree are set. Um, yeah, basically for IMX6, that was really easy because uh, the SOC IPs are all uh, defined uh, in the um, uh, SOC, DTSI, and I just had to add them. So here is the example for uh, my awesome board. So uh, we have the IMX6S, so it's an uh, IMX6 solo board. DTS, you include the correct uh, DTSI, so it's DL because it's dual light or solo or, I mean, free scale is really uh, Sorry for my language, but fucked up because uh, you have IMX6 squad, so Q, but it's almost the same as DL, so dual light, but yeah, solo works also. I, I, I don't know. And uh, for the PCIe, I had only to uh, add the reset GPIO, so you just set uh, the reset GPIO of PCIe is here, uh, it's active low, and the power supply here is here, this regulator, and I want to enable it. And you are also, and that's it. Then uh, you want to uh, compile your uh, device tree with uh, the correct, when you enable, when you choose the correct um, uh, platform. So for example, as I said, Freescale, mm, it's uh, IMX6Q. There is no option for uh, DL or S. So you put everything that is IMX6Q, DL, S in uh, this uh, part of the code, and then that's it. When you have a dev config that is uh, selecting config soc MX6Q, your DTS will be compiled into a DTB. 
uh, you create a dev, dev config for your board. So you start from uh, your SOC dev config. So here in my case, it's IMX underscore V6 V7 dev config. And if, if you're not as lucky as me, you have to start from uh, the multi V7 dev config with all the stock family and all the drivers and uh, most of the drivers enabled. So it's really the second options, the second uh, steps you have to do is to strip everything you don't need. So drivers that are, that are not relevant to your board, features, uh, basically everything that is useless. So SOC families, you don't want to uh, build anything admin related while you have an IMX6 uh, SOC. Um, yeah, then you add the, add the config of, your dri of the driver you want to build. So, as I said, you grab the name, the base name of the driver, like we did for U-Boot. So, where is it? Uh, here. So, you have the dot .o, and then you just check, uh, take this one and add it to your dev config. Of course, not the one from U-Boot, but yeah. Uh, here we go. Um, yeah, you have to know that most drivers depends also on uh, subsystems, of course. So if you want to enable the driver, uh, uh, the MXS uh, NAND driver, you have to enable the subsystem, uh, the NAND subsystem as well. I mean, it's logical. Uh, problems encountered: the PCIe driver um, was probing, but not enumerating any device. Uh, Basically, it was working BSP, so I knew it was my fault or uh, mainstream, uh, something missing in main uh, upstream. That was the case. I was missing a regulator uh, support. So, yeah, I wrote a patch, sent it upstream, and that's it. It works. Same for Ethernet driver. It was missing a post reset uh, delay for the PHY, so it was not initializing. And same, wrote the 20 line patch, sent it upstream, and that's it. So uh, the effort needed to support Linux, um, Ethernet, I, I mean, everything here is supported now for, uh, with 1,000 lines. And yeah, most of it is the DTS. So you're uh, helped with the documentation from the DT binding. And the dev config, you just have to uh, select the correct uh, subsystems and drivers. So it was one line in the Mac file. One more line in the Mac file, uh, 20 lines for regulator supports, etc. No modification of Linux source or code otherwise. Uh, thanks to the well-supported IMX6 uh, SOC and the, the ports, the, the IP we had in the extension board. Uh, of course, we had some problem. <laughs> so um, we got some weird bugs, weird bug with dual display. So this display driver would crash, completely crash when we had HDMI and LVDS um, um, uh, DTS uh, node enabled at the same time, even if the both uh, output was not connected at the same time. And we found some quirks on the mailing list and decided, yeah, well, it's better to go to 4.13 they did really copy the DTB, make sure uh, nothing has changed in the bindings, and yeah, it worked. So half an hour work, and it just fixed my problem. So basically, I just wanted to say, once your uh, SOC is really well supported, it's really easy, really, really easy, and not time consuming to uh, add support for your ball. So that's it for me. Do you have any question? Uh, I think we have two or three minutes. Tops. Yeah. No. no I'm okay. Uh, yeah. So. Whoop. Well, uh, I have a couple of comments uh, about the IMX6. So this is a bit of a legacy design. That's why it looks like it looks in U-Boot. So it's not super. Um, about the Pinmux controller, DRAM clocks, that actually goes into drivers now. Okay. So because the IMX6 is a legacy design, it's still in ARC, but on the newer ports, it goes into drivers. 
And actually, if you are doing a new port, you s are supposed to use driver model always, so avoid the legacy stuff. Yeah. And uh, if at all possible, use device tree. Yeah. So that it can be shared with Linux. Again, since the IMX6 is kind of legacy-ish, it's not there. Yeah, and we had some problems with uh, some drivers that, when compiled with DM, would just not work at all. So well, patch it, welcome. Yeah, patch it, yeah, of course. <laughs> but it's, yeah, the client really wanted a solution right away, so I know. Otherwise, the MX6 port is obviously very good, so. Yeah. Uh, by the way, on slide 34, you have oh. a typo in the device tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to Yeah, the, it? the root node is supposed to be forward slash. Thanks. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. <laughs> yep. Oh, sorry. What? Yeah, yeah, we'll put it uh, in, uh, on the internet. Yeah, on the, on the website, just after the, the, the talk. No, it's okay. Hi, um, great slides, by the way. Uh, but how do you know it's done? Uh, I mean, how do you know you should finish uh, porting? What's your test case suit? Do you get it from the customer, or do you have a standard set of uh, tests for compatibility? Uh, basically, yes, I use the use case of the, the, the client. So, you have a set of commands in your boot. So for example, to test NAND, you erase the NAND, write to NAND, boot whatever it's in NAND now, or uh, load it into RAM, and then test it's the same as the file you download it from any other mean. So basically, yeah, you have to uh, set your own tests. I don't know if, uh, I think there are um, a test suit, but it's, uh, I don't know, nothing about it, so. Okay. Yeah, wait. That's what you want for MPD. Sorry? MPD tests. Yeah. That's the package. That's what you want for MPD. Okay, so there is a package named MTD test that you can use in your boot. Thank you. Uh, uh, in Linux. In li yeah, but if you want, oh, uh, I think the question was in your boot and Linux both, right? Well, on the Linux side, yeah. MTD tests, on the U-boot side, uh, NAND command. Okay, so in your boot, you have nothing really defined. You have to use yourself uh, the NAND command. And in Linux, it's MTD test. That answer? Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs>